Well folks, welcome back for step two. We're not gonna go into the whole introduction on this video. It's gonna go diving right into the Unify. Now if you wanna see the entire video from its beginning, I would highly advise going back to part one. All the listings for all the videos are down below. They're all up to, uploaded at the same time. So you can go back to part one, which is on the Unify Dream Machine. Uh, so we got our gateway up and running. Now we're gonna add a wired switch to the mix. Um, so what we're gonna do, is we're gonna see how this one comes. This is a 24 port Unify switch from Ubiquity. Let's, uh, we have a nice little box with components and we have the switch. That is not that heavy of a switch. You know, I, time to time you deal with all these various switches out there from Cisco and um, rockets and stuff. This is a. Uh, I mean, it's. It, don't get me wrong. It's not light by it by any means, but it's not that heavy to be honest about it. So let's bring it in. And we'll show you a little bit closer. Okay, as before, here's what we got. We got 24 port switch with two SFP ports over here. Uh, looks like we have some kind of vent cell here on the top. Little reset pin button right there down in the corner. On the back, we just have power plug in and as well as some more venting. Notice there are no active fans on this thing, uh, at least not big and bulky. So I'm assuming that this is going to be substantially quieter than some other uh, switches that are on the market. So um, there are other companies that make, you know, switches like this without big fans on them. But that is something to bring up real quick. I'm expecting this to be fairly, fairly quiet. So in the box of goodies, we do have our power cord. We do have our rack ears. We do have the hardware screws. So it just comes in a bag this time. And then we do have our little setup guide, which I'm sure it's gonna be a nice, easy one like it was before. Um, I don't think I need to film this again, but we're gonna go ahead and install the rack ears. All that's gonna take is cutting this guy open real quick. Let's, let's see what kind of hardware is in here real quick. So we have uh, pieces to actually mount it in the rack, and then we have our rack ear screws, and that's it. So you really can't confuse them. The big guys here are going to be for the rack, obviously, um, as well as the rack nuts, but my rack doesn't require rack nuts. So, set those off. I'm just going to use these just like the, we did with the Dream Machine. I'm going to go ahead and mount the rack ears. And then we're going to go ahead and just go, go into uh, installing it. So next time you see it, it'll have the rack ears on it. And just as before, we have real simple instructions connected to your uh, your Dream Machine Pro. Set it up in the app. So we have our, our Dream Machine fully connected, up and going, good to go. I have my patch panel, and now I'm going to put the switch in. And that's... I'm actually going to be placed below my patch panel. I like putting spaces, that way I can easily get in here if I have to manipulate any of my connections. And to be honest, I don't know if I really need 48. I might drop this down to a 24-bit uh, port flat panel later, but for now I'm going to keep it as it is because that's how it is, and yeah, we'll, we'll play with it as it is. But let's go ahead and put the switch in, get that powered up, and get it connected to the, the primary dream machine. So. As before, I have my own rack screws that I'm not going to be using the screws that came with the actual switch. Um, but with that said, I'm going to get this put in real quick. As before, we're going to take this little window off, the sticker off to the, the display. Stick that on that. Now, before I actually power it up, I am going to do, get the connection on here. And that's going to be one cable that didn't come with it. Uh, I just got a, uh, a uh, SFP Plus cable so I can actually connect the two. I tried to get Ubiquities, but I had a hard time finding anything that was less than three feet long. And I knew that I did not need three feet to go from here to here and I didn't want a whole bunch extra. So, what I'm going to do here is pull... These are just plastic ports just to keep the dust out of here, right? So the lower one here, the 11, that's our 10 gig connection. Plug in our SFP Plus cable here. Plug it in down here. Now we're connected, the switch to the that, and I'm going to get the power cable plugged in for this as well. So 
Give me just a moment. So while it's booting up, what we can do is any devices. Now, this is a problem. I had everything one footers before because I had them over here. I might actually bring them over here now rather than just skip these first two switch panels because I have a 24 port switch. While it boots up, I'm going to do that real quick. I'll be right back. It just beat me. It only took me a couple minutes, but she's now powered up and going. Um, we're going to go ahead and open up the app to finish up the setup to make sure everything is connected and everything is good to go on in that account. I decided so that at least we can see things. I just passed everything through real quick other than my access points, which are going to be coming up soon. So again, we're going to use the Unify Network app, and that's going to be the same app that we set up last time. In this case, we're going to be connecting to our controller that we already have, which is the UDM Pro. Now, I have that switch actually plugged in um, two different ways, actually, technically. Uh, and it's already finding clients uh, directly because of all the things that I've already plugged in, uh, wired, and uh, at least the things that are currently turned on. Um, now, it is actually plugged in to a Ethernet port rather than the SFP Plus. I don't have, I wasn't getting a reading on anything on the SFP Plus yet, so that's um, interesting. That's something I gotta look into. So right now we're just plugging, uh, well, if I back up here, let me show you real quick how I have it plugged in. So this uh, Ethernet port right here, in port, I have it in port 23 to port 8 up top in the Unified Dream. Uh, the SFP, I'm not getting a reading on this. Now, it could be this cable, maybe it's just not compatible. Um, it says that when I bought it, it was supposed to be. So that's something i got to look into, and, I'm, and I'll get back to you here in just a few minutes on that specifically. But this is the cable that's currently connecting the two, at least while, until I get this running, because this will run a lot faster than just going through the Ethernet port. But coming back to the app, um, we can see that we are connected. We do have the, the clients that are actually going through the switch is actually switching up to the, the Dream. So um, there's the PoE right there. There's the actual switch itself pending adoption. Let's hit adopt. Adopting. Now maybe once I get the adoption in there, then I can actually configure it. Let's see, let's hit configure. And this might be the item that I'm gonna have to look into. Let me see what I can find out here. So an, a kind of a neat thing here is it, it did adopt it finally. If we go in here, we can actually see every single port, um, whether it's 10, 100 or one gigabit. So depending on what's plugged into it is whether or not what it needs. Um, we actually click on each port. Uh, we can actually see how much data is actually being pulled by any specific port uh, at any time. <clears throat> Within here as well, we can go into the settings, how many users. So how people that are actually currently using the system. So let's say we go to my iMac right now. Um, we can see all the information on that connection. Um, we, can we can see which port number it is. So number nine it looks like. If we go to the bedroom here, number three, so that's port three. So the nice thing about this is not only can we see exactly what's going on, what's actually connected, but we can tell exactly what port it's connected to. So that's a really big thing as well. So that's um, the devices. I mean, I have more devices that I will eventually be plugging in this thing, but it's a great thing to at least get started with this stuff. So there you can see it. In a nutshell, you can see the connection from any of these right now. Nothing's really going on. Obviously, just doing this setup. So now uh, we're basically configured. We're good to go. We'll go through more of these settings in another video, uh, but we are fully set up and running. And uh, yeah, we'll get to the access points next. So here with the 24 port switch, before we end on this one, just want to at least show you the information that you can get from the actual um, touch panel itself. As you can see that I could swipe that through and see information. And so we have a, a quick way to access all the information, whether it's from the ports, Ethernet ports or SFP ports. We can actually see which one's gig connection, which one's 100 megabit connection from one through 12, or you can actually break it down, kind of cool. Uh, same thing with the SFP ports. Uh, we can actually see on either of those. Um, let's see, this is a uh, throughput, so how much data is actually being used currently, system, PoE, how many watts we're actually using currently, um, let's see, how many watts in the last seven days, oh, that's kind of cool, last 30 days, and then throughput again, we're back to there. Information, we can see our controller data, all the information on all the ports, uh, how much uptime we are, which hardware version, and then let's go to settings, that's just going to be, oh, 
display brightness, color. Yep, so just display brightness, color, and then in the middle, uh, that's just how you basically hide it or put it to sleep. So, pretty neat. So, step two, or part two, of our five part series that we're doing um, is finished. Uh, I set this guy up yesterday with all the other videos. If you watched the first one, thanks, fantastic. Um, but the switch was was really painless to set up. Now I did have a little bit of problem with the SFP connection between the Dream Machine Pro and my switch. I still don't know what caused that. Could have been that I use a third party uh, SFP cable. I really wanted to use the actual Ubiquiti one, but like I said, I couldn't find it at the length I wanted. I could have gotten a, th a, a three foot or a, or a one meter cable. It just would have been overkill. I've been looping it, right? And I just didn't want any loops. I wanted to keep it as clean as possible. Um, that said, I was able to get it working just going through the app, just basically setting the SFP port on both the Dream Machine Pro and the Switch to one gigabyte and then resetting the connections on the whole thing. And then pow, she went. Uh, but for the ma major part of the setup, I didn't have the SFP running. I just took a patch cable and plugged it in from port eight to port 23, I think. It doesn't matter, they're all switch ports. So it wouldn't matter which port you plugged it into. Um, but it made it really, really simple, you know. And then when I got the SFP connection going, then I could actually unplug the ethernet port. Um, now I will say this as well, when I had that SFP cable running, like I said before, uh, it, the switch actually disconnected and then reconnected. So uh, it, it took a second for it to fully like switch over to the SFP rather than using the Ethernet bridge as the uplink. But worked fantastic and is still working fantastic. So um, yeah, pretty easy. Um, definitely check, uh, watch for the next video. If, you if this was your first video you watched, you can head back and I'm gonna put the links uh, here at the end and down in the description to all five parts of this series and they're all being uploaded at the same time so you can't you can just go one to one to one so uh, unless you're watching it before the other ones are finished uploading i guess that said guys thanks for watching and we'll catch you back here on geek smart for another future video i will have uh full reviews coming on tech for these as well each individual product so thanks for watching see you soon